Hi, welcome to Movie Short Flicks. Today I'm going to explain to you the film called Spontaneous. Warning, spoiler ahead. Anyway, enjoy watching. Mara is seen sitting in class, bored as heck. She drops her pencil and when she reaches for it, the girl in front of her explodes. Mara says that the girl was nice and normal, not particularly explosive. Everyone runs out of the classroom, except for her. The two of them were never really friends, just classmates. All of the students like the dead girl, but one of them in particular. As the kids run out of the building, Tess finds Mara in front and asks her what happened. She can't believe it, but then sees Mara's shoes. Forensics are seen taking evidence from the classroom. The only thing really damaged in the explosion was the girl, everything else, as Mara says, was aesthetics. Her classmates are taken to a police station and questioned. Mara jokes with the police officer, but he sees through her wit. Next, they're given the opportunity to shower and Mara asks if she could get her shoes back. The police gives the students new clothes and make them wait in the station. Dylan makes an offbeat comment how the whole thing looked like a Cronenberg movie, but only Mara laughs. The rest talk about their theories on why the thing happened, when one of the girls asks when they'll let them go. Mara says that will happen when they can be sure if the thing doesn't happen again to one of them. Mara's parents pick her up from the police station and bring her home. When they arrive she goes to her room and smokes pot then gets a text from someone telling her that they have a crush on her. They continue texting and she giggles. The girl's funeral is the next day. Mara and Tess watch as the girl's father takes a sticker from his car. Then they go to get some shrooms from the Dalton twins. Tess thinks it's a bad idea. Later, they're getting coffee and Mara puts all of the mushrooms in her latte. The two of them were friends since they were very young and plan to remain friends until they're old and live in a beach house together. They talk about the girl that died, when Dylan approaches and asks to join them. He flirts with Mara and she realizes that he was the boy that texted her before. Dylan tells them that what happened made him think about life and that now he wants to live his to the fullest. Mara gets sick because of the mushrooms and throws up in the toilet, while Dylan holds her hair. She starts hallucinating and tells him about it. He thinks that that's awesome. Her hallucinations continue through the night and he stays with her. They talk about what happened, saying that they both miss seeing it. Dylan gets her home and asks her out on a date. Later, her and Tess are lying in her bed and talking. Mara says that she won't continue taking drugs. Tess asks if she's cried yet and tells her that she cries all the time. It's the day of the homecoming game and the two girls arrive at school wearing costumes. They see that the other students have built a shrine for the dead girl, when Dylan joins them. He recognizes Mara's costume as Carrie. Later the two of them talk in the library and she asks him how he got a crush on her. He tells her that it started on the first day he saw her and everything grew from there. The day the girl died and Mara said that it could happen to all of them too made him decide to ask her out and stop waiting for the right moment. At the game, she's taking photos of the jocks, waiting for their jerseys to line up and spell something dirty. He laughs at her jokes, then she tells him about the moment she realized she liked him. They have a nice moment together, when something happens during the game. Everyone runs out screaming, because one of the players has exploded. Dylan grabs Mara's hand and drags her out of there. They hug behind the sports arena. The city becomes an important news story. The media has dubbed what happened the Covington curse. Tess and Mara attend the latest memorial, where everyone fondly remembers the boy that died. The next day, her parents inform her that school has been cancelled indefinitely. They tell her that they'll still keep applying to colleges, so she said after everything blows over. Mara makes a joke that now they can't tell her that back in their day was worse than what she is now. That night, Dylan comes to pick her up in an old ice cream truck which he got that day. He bought it to make everyone laugh. The two of them go to a school party in the memory of the kids that died, but quickly go out for a walk. They throw away their drinks, because they think it could be alcohol that might make it happen. They laugh as they wonder about what really makes the teenagers explode. After a moment they stop and talk about his father, then they kiss. Suddenly they hear screaming from the house and go to check what happened. Another student died. Mara and Tess talk to Agent Rossetti. She doesn't know what is happening either. Rossetti asks for their help and tells them to bring her something. Next, she goes to the Dalton twins and tells them that the agent told her to bring her drugs. Mara thinks that the reason behind it isn't because the police thinks the drugs are actually causing it, but just to check all possibilities. She tells them that she will buy everything from them. The three of them drive to the place where the twins hide their stash. They tell Mara that they will be leaving town soon and she tells them about Dylan, as she's texting with him. Suddenly, the brother blows up. The sister quickly jumps over to the driver's seat and tries to drive the car, when she blows up too. Dylan finds the car wrecked, 
but doesn't find Mara immediately. He sees a bloody handprint and goes to search for her in the woods. Dylan finds her washing up in a river and he hugs her, saying that he thought she died in the car. He's brought her a sweatsuit and called Rossetti before he got there. Suddenly, he sees someone in a hazmat suit watching them. Immediately, more appear and grab the two of them. Mara is in a hospital, when a doctor shows up, telling her that they're there to help. She starts panicking, but sees Dylan on the bed next to her. They make an ET joke together, confusing the doctors. That night, Dylan wakes up and tells her that the whole class is there too. She pushes her bed closer to his and he tells her about the questions the doctors asked him. He calls her his girlfriend and she likes it. The government has officially quarantined the entire class. The head doctor questions the students. She asks about the kids that died, about their dreams and emotions, as well as what they want to do in college. Mara replies that she only wants to stay alive. That night, Mara and Tess talk at their box. Tess is worried that it might happen to Mara and makes her promise that it won't. She says that if Mara goes, so would she. The next day, the class is in a recreational chamber. Mara complains that she's bored and says that they should break out. No one wants to or have already tried, so they start talking about the explosions. Two boys argue if it's a curse or not. Dylan shares a dumb idea and everyone ridicules him. Him and Mara make out in the shower. Later, a government official shows the teenagers a PowerPoint presentation and offers to answer all of their questions. Mara doesn't understand what they're actually doing to help them and makes fun of him. The official gives a cliched reply and the kids laugh at him, but get angry quickly. One of them explodes. Then another one explodes while sleeping. Tests are being done in the facility. The parents of the kids wait outside of the facility and the doctor comes out to tell one of the couples what has happened to their child. The kids keep dying and all of the tests and the drugs they are giving them fail. They all try to live as normal as they can inside, but one after the other, the teenagers keep exploding. Even the doctors working in the facility get restless. The blue pill that they are being given seems to start working. Everyone in the facility is happy about it. At one point they release the kids in the custody of their parents. Mara's mom and dad drive her home, when she sees that there are no Christmas decorations in the city. Her father tells her that no one felt festive, but when they arrive home they surprise her with a tree. Later, the three of them are decorating the tree, when her father hands her her vape and tells her that she's terrible at hiding the fact that she smokes pot. They all vape together and talk about adulthood and her graduation. Before bed, Mara takes one of the blue pills. The next day, Dylan is at her house. They sleep together for the first time. Mara asks him if they're safe and Dylan says that he doesn't know, but that they should take it one day at a time and go back to school. She doesn't want to go back. Their class is the only one that will be going to school in the same building. One of their teachers tells them a story of how he'd seen someone blow up when he was a soldier. He tells them that he'll help them graduate. Later, Rizetti is taking Mara's blood pressure and they talk about the nickname of the blue pill, the snooze button, which Mara doesn't like. Rizetti doesn't think that it's over. For Valentine's Day, Mara decorates Dylan's barn and the two of them have a party there just for them. He tells her that he loves her and she says the F word back to him. They laugh about it, then Dylan asks her to spend the summer with him if they don't die. Tess and Mara are in a diner, waiting for their food, but the waitress is too scared to bring their food over to them. They leave. The next day, the doctor is in their school explaining the snooze button pill to them. She says that while it isn't a cure, it's a treatment. The doctor gets a volunteer to make a point, but as soon as the kid starts following her instruction, he explodes. Suddenly, another one explodes too. Then a third one. All them run out, but kids just keep blowing up. Mara is with Dylan and can't get to Tess in the commotion. All of them are running and trying to get out, as kids keep exploding. Mara gets left behind and when a schoolmate tries to help her, he explodes too. She finds a door and gets out of the school. Dylan meets her outside and they embrace. Suddenly, Dylan explodes right in front of her. Mara walks home covered in blood. Rosetti finds her and takes her to a hospital. A fragment of his jaw hit her in the head. Her mom goes to the hospital and helps her wash off. That night, she sleeps between her parents. She gets really depressed and stops taking the pills, refusing to communicate. Dylan's funeral comes and goes. Tess tries to get her out of her room, but Mara just sits there watching videos of Dylan. At one point she leaves her room and makes cocktails for her dad. Mara calls the cocktail all my friends and boyfriend are dead. She drinks the drink and her dad tells her that he's not equipped to deal with this. Mara tries to joke but just keeps getting drunk. She leaves her house that night drunk and the next day shows up at Tess's house, still drunk. They argue about going to school. Tess doesn't know how to help her because Mara has lost all hope. 
she goes to school, leaving Mara behind. After that, Mara storms a protest about the curse, then steals alcohol from a store. The people that work there let her take it. Agent Rossetti waits for her in front of the store and when Mara tries to throw her a bottle of vodka, she breaks her window. Later, she argues with her parents about that and about getting drunk constantly. They want to help her, but she doesn't want to play along and make them feel better, considering that she too might die soon. Mara goes to her room and thinks about going to prom, but then enters a message board where other students are talking about the Covington curse. They are calling her the curse and she believes them. Mara goes to her school and visits the memorial for the first girl, then her classroom and finally the place where Dylan died. It's the night of the prom and Mara is sitting on a swing. Tess joins her and they start talking about their future again. She tells Mara that she's leaving Covington that night. Before she leaves, Tess tells Mara that she'll always be her best friend. Mara eventually makes it to prom, drunk. The atmosphere inside is terrible. Everyone is doing their own thing and she laughs about it, then goes to spike the punch. Her teachers don't do anything about it. She takes it with her and drinks it alone. Later, she goes up to the stage and says that she's sorry for killing everyone, sorry for being the curse. Mara says that she hates herself for hurting everyone and then accepts her diploma. The girl after her says the same and Mara boos her. Suddenly, other girls say the same thing. Mara goes to the graveyard to visit Dylan's grave. She tells him that she loves him too and lies down on his tomb. His mom finds her there and asks to join her, then lies down beside her. Mara apologizes for not coming to the funeral and tells his mom about the first time she hung out with Dylan. His mom says that he told her that he held Mara's hair and the girl asks her if she thought she was bad news. The mom says that she just thought that Mara was in a lot of pain and didn't know how to deal with it. Mara tells her that she feels like she's dying and that she's scared all the time. Dylan's mom says that life just feels like that sometimes and that none of the kids deserved what happened to them. Mara asks her if she's okay and when she shakes her head, the girl holds her. She comes back home the next day with her parents waiting for her. Mara apologizes to them and they reconcile. Eventually, she takes of her bandage and remembers Dylan as she looks at the scar. After a few months, the explosions stop. Mara says goodbye to Rossetti. She continues taking the snooze button and goes on with her life. Mara is leaving for college in Dylan's truck. Her parents worry if it's safe, but still let her go. They say goodbye and she drives off. She drives by the school which is going to be torn down. By the end of the school year 31 students had died. Mara lived, even though she doesn't know why. She says that the lesson is that everyone dies and that you have to live your life the way you want to. Mara can imagine her future, what she'll do and the boy she'll date or marry. She thinks she'll even be a mom, or maybe even the president one day. At the end of the day, bad stuff is going to happen. That's inevitable. She won't waste her life waiting for something that might never come for her. Mara imagines a future where her and Tess grow old together in the beach house they wanted. She won't be afraid anymore, because she could die any second and so could you. Smash the like button. Like you smash your mama's ass. Comment your reaction and don't be a bummer. For more videos, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Anyway, thanks for watching. Goodbye.